It's a long, long time, um, and obviously we were very hopeful before, and, and that we're still going now has been very disappointing for me and, and very disappointing for Nazanin. Um, so I spoke to her yesterday. She was pretty flat, um, very flat uh, last week, which was Nauru's Iranian New Year, and the fact that she was, uh, was still in prison while uh, away from her family. Um, yeah, it's been a tough time. How often do you speak to her, Richard? It's back to twice a week. So after the foreign secretary visited, it got more frequent. Um, but then, it, more recently, it's got back to sort of standard, which is twice a week. So it, it better than it was. I, I now get to you know know how she is and keep updated. Um, but obviously, this, is, this has been going on a very long time. And it's important for us to then to try and do events like today to just try and keep spirits up. Now, the government. Um have said that Nazanin's case is a consular case and because it's a consular case that they're not legally bound to help her. Do you think it's a consular case? No, I, I've been, I mean, I'm sure that they're legally bound and, and one of the questions that, that we were taking to the, to the government and we're wanting to meet the foreign secretary is exactly that, is to find out what the government really thinks her rights are because in this situation where she's being held, um, as I said on, on your shows before, she's not being held because of anything she's done, she's being held because something the government hasn't done. So there is an old historic debt that the government hasn't paid, and there's a fight over interest rates, which is why she's still being held in prison. Um, in that situation, where a British citizen is being held in this way, it seems to me that's not a normal constant case. There won't be many people in that situation. So it's important to establish that the government clarifies exactly what her rights are and what obligations it thinks it has. Boris Johnson obviously was in Iran. He didn't meet her. He said that he wants to bring her home soon. You're now pushing to meet him. What will you do when you speak, if you do get to speak to Boris Johnson? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to speak to the Foreign Secretary. I'm not sure at the moment the battle is around whether he'll allow a lawyer in the room as well. Um, uh, the question really is, is to ask exactly, I mean, that's the what's going on question, like why, why is she still being held, what, what, given that we were so hopeful at Christmas, given that we were so hopeful um, even just after Christmas and, and now it seems so distant. Um, so yeah, part of it's asking what's going on, part of it's asking, well, all the time there is this standoff between Iran and the UK um, and relations seem to be uh, getting worse again, what do you think her rights are? We've got the Iranian nuclear deal. The US says that come May 12th, if it's not fixed, as it says, that it will walk away. Are you worried about that, that date, and the possible ram ramifications for Nazanin? I mean, I think it's fair to say that, that, you know, as we've got closer to May the 12th and probably since about mid-February when some more foreign dual nationals were taken, that the situation seems to have got worse. Um, and there's obviously a tension in the relationship when the UK is threatening new sanctions on Iran, um, the Americans are, are threatening all sorts of things. Um, that can only be bad news for us, just as, as progress on other issues is good news for us. Quite what it means, I don't know. I, one of the questions really to ask is, is you know, there is a window to solve this before May the 12th, and, and goodness, where will we be afterwards? Richard, I can see that tree behind you. Tell us what you're doing to mark the day today. Yeah, so you can see the tree, and it's the tree we used last year to mark Nazanin's uh, first anniversary, where we hung uh, Ideas of Freedom, One Day Dreams. We have had to come back a following year on, and, and this time we asked supporters to send in jokes or things that make them smile, and we've had different MPs have sent them in, different uh, celebrities also. And, and we're hanging them from the tree. Uh, that you can't really see it so clearly, but there are stones at the bottom, uh, which are the stones we painted uh, outside the Foreign Office to mark Mother's Day. Um, so really things that are cheerful and, and, and you know, to draw on the strength and the support and, and the positivity of, of outside, so that Nazanin is reminded that, you know, OK, it's a grey world in, in the prison, but, but outside there is still colour, there is still laugh, and we still need to keep going. Because yeah, some could say, well, this is absolutely no joking matter. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's certainly, certainly, I mean, there are serious points to make, and there are serious points to make to the government about this is, you know, it's outrageous that it's gone on so long. Uh, this needs to be solved, and, and the government needs to clarify what it's doing and what it thinks uh, Nazanin's rights are. Um, at the same time, uh, it's also important that spirits are kept up. It's important that Nazanin's spirits are kept up, and that you know, we act so that she doesn't have to. Richard, how is your daughter? Uh, she, she's all right. I mean, she's still she's getting bigger. Um, we managed to get her to, to tell a joke uh, on social media. Um, she's obviously still too little to really understand, but what she's very good at is understanding the mood of everyone. So for the family, family Nuru's, where, where everyone was very down, then she just became very difficult and, and wouldn't eat for dinner, wouldn't go to bed, and, and, and all the ways in which she can mark the fact that she needs attention. Um, but, yeah, she, uh, she's obviously missing her mum. Um, occasionally misses her dad. 
um, and hopefully we'll, we'll have them both home soon.